Miss Jennifer Doran. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Fine. I love you. And I love you, my boy, Eric. Oh, yes. I love you. And Eric says, I love you, mama. And he came in like, like fluttering right around my head. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing, Eric? What are you doing? <laughs> Just Is like, yeah, just being silly. Yes, I was like, oh, okay. Like I felt all the flutters right around my head when he came oh, in. Silly boy. Yeah, uh, it's just like him. Now we're going to talk about the Freemasons. You know, uh, Daniel uh, Dan Brown's book. He just came. Well, I don't know if he just came out. Came out with the lost symbol. Uh, he's doing for the uh, Freemason. What is you know its predecessor is the Da Vinci Code. So I want to ask about the Freemasons. Now, my grandfather Grant Terrell was a mason is there a difference between masons and freemasons eric i have his masonic ring actually yeah no he, no he says not really not not really it's part of the same part of the same oh, okay organization where did it come from how did it start are they actually masons brick masons or were they is that how it started um <clears throat> no he says no not necessarily um it was I guess he says it's really, really started like as a club, just like as oh, okay a, as a like a men's group yeah. sort of sort of thing. Okay, um, I don't know centuries ago at this point, um, and that's how it started. It started very small, just with a, just a handful of people. Wow, interesting. Well, um, they said that Jack the Ripper was a Freemason. Is that true? I mean, I guess he could so, be. He's so what guy. Eric, I actually what Eric just said about that, what he showed me is that he was right on the outskirts okay. of the Freemasons. So, so not necessarily right in and, and one of the Freemasons, but part of a connection to somebody who was in there or, you know, there was some connections. And Eric is saying that there was a lot of people like that who weren't really right in it yet, but that were... Yeah, just it's like outside, you know, just outside it's the group being a member of the PTA, but really not signing up for the bake sales. Yes, yeah, yeah, basically. Right. Now, there's been so many myths that when I was looking, because I don't know, I didn't. So the very last minute, I pronounced some stuff. Eight myths decoded. So many myths surrounding them, and you know, like um, for, for one thing, um, are they tied tied somehow to the occult? I mean, eventually, did they become there or some sect? Yeah. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Eventually. Eric said that's not really how the, how it started, yeah. but eventually some sections did um, t tie into occult type stuff. Yes, like like what? Like black magic, bad stuff. Um. Well, yeah, some 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 negative. So what Eric says is, remember, anytime there's power oh. in in something, you know, power corrupts corrupts yes yeah. it brings negativity yes so mm. this was not the intention but yes there was um some negativity that was brought by the power that this had yes is that still the case or is it have they cleaned up their act so to speak he says it's still uh, still the case okay it's not not the not like this you know not no not group hard, with yeah. power the whole group isn't looking to do bad and do negative but there's the sectors, sectors okay, that are, yes. That are, okay, then, then, you know, that's like a bad Girl Scout troop right there. Yes. Uh, okay, what about, uh, is it a religion with this god called Ga uh, Gautu, the grand architect of the universe? Yes, Eric said, yes, there is a religious aspect to this, yes. Well, tell me more about that. Um, well, he says, like with any other religious group, there it's a little bit it is a little bit different it's not necessarily what okay so what eric says is it kind of takes stuff from a bunch of different places okay it, it feels like that so it's not necessarily christian it's not necessarily uh. jewish it's not necessarily buddhist or islamic or anything it's got a like a collection of beliefs that some of them cross over into multiple other religions okay so they'll pass around his skull with open school with wine and no no however there have been sectors that did delve more into the uh, say satanic is what oh, okay. eric is saying like the dark magic the, the satan the oh okay the, the what is the he's showing me the um what's that that animal with the horns 
Oh yeah, I know. I don't know, Luciferian I, kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that's probably very small. Um, all right. So, but I, I, from what I understand now, largely they're about socializing, community service. Yes. Uh, you know, self improvement, that sort of thing, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, all right. So, what about the the symbol being everywhere? What was a Freemason? Isn't it like a triangle with an eye or something? I can't remember, but there's something there. Yeah. And isn't it on the dollar bill or our, our, our US currency? Yeah. Yeah. That symbol is th at, like throughout the world. Um, it's, but you know, it's been centuries that this group has been around and that symbol has been um, around for a very long time. And so, yes, it does get put into buildings and, um, you know, it gets kind of put all over you know like the Carbon. all seeing eye well is that because i mean is it because of them did they start it or did they just ha adopt the all seeing eye um as one of their symbols so the eye comes from other places yeah the eye the the you know the eye comes from from other stuff it's not it's not exclusive to the freemasons um so they adopted it but the their their particular symbol is you know different than any other eye you know like she had the eye of Ra, okay. and, you know the evil eye you know like these sort of things that, oh, that yeah. go back further oh, um, yeah. is what eric is saying um so the eye is not new right to them all right so it's on the dollar bill not because of the freemason it's just the dollar the u.s dollar bill has the all saying no, eye and, and no eric, eric is saying there is there is a connection to the freemasons oh. on the dollar bill oh he, he okay. says, no there's a connection on the dollar bill to it why um who did that was it ben franklin or something i mean uh, i think he was a freemason too yeah yeah so yeah so back when they decided to do the dollar bill the people in charge of it um put it on there i don't i don't know who they who they were they were um, Freemasons, probably huh yes yes just just um when you asked why eric said it's about the power the unity the you know the the, the all-seeingness of it yes okay oh here's this there there was one known mason on the committee to design the seal ben franklin his proposal uh, design was eyeless without an eye and that was rejected but the eye represents the divine guidance of the u.s ship of state uh at, or as secretary of the u.s congress charles thompson put it in 1782 it alludes to many signal in uh, um, interpositions of providence in favor of the American cause. All right, so now um, are they descendants from the Knights of Templar, the, the Masons, Freemasons? Yeah, they're, yeah. Eric says yes. There's a, they're, yeah, they're connected. I don't, I don't have any idea what that is. Eric said yes, they they are connected. It says here that the Freemasons claim to have acquired the secrets of the Templars and adopted. Templar symbols and terminology, naming certain levels of the Masonic hierarchy after Templar degrees, for example, like, I don't know, maybe grand. Yeah, but it's different. Eric says it's different. Yes, they, yeah, they're connected, but it is different. They expanded on it. They, you know, yes, but yes, they're connected. All right. And there's some, um, some people who think that the, Mas the Masons are hiding Templar treasures. Uh, you cut out there. What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, no, I can't hear you. Uh oh, uh -oh. can you hear me now? I've no audio for you. Hmm. Oh, there we go. You're back. You're back. Okay. Maybe we shouldn't ask that question. <laughs> oh no, maybe are they hiding the the uh, the Templar treasures? Yes. Oh, that's why I cut out. Is that why I cut <laughs> out, Eric? Don't worry, I'm not gonna look for it. I don't have that kind of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But apparently, we should move on from that. No, he's he's teasing um oh god okay um embedded okay wait so we can't ask any more of that because our lives would be in danger is that no, it go ahead ask something else and we'll see we'll see what happens okay okay uh one myth is freemasons rule the world maybe it's the impressive list of prominent freemasons from napoleon to fdr to king kamehameha the fourth and fifth uh some think the freemasons are the small cabal running the globe is that true so so eric says there this is kind of a gray area is what he's saying because he's saying there have been a lot of men in power who yeah. were connected to the freemasons 
So then he says, so sometimes it gets like kind of blown up to be bigger than it really is. Um, so yes, there are Freemasons who sit, sit high in power all over the world. Um, but as far as, you know, the small group of them running the world and controlling everything, he says that's not quite how it works. Now, it used to be um, a, bit, a bit more like that, you know, go, go way back 100 plus years. It was a bit more like that, but it's too hard now for a small group of people to control the whole world. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but there's, there's definitely Freemasons that are high in power okay. all over the world. All right. Like a lot of people who are in power are Eagle Scouts too. So yes. Yep. Okay. It's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. All right. So some people think the Freemasons started the American revolution. Uh, uh, let me read this. Prominent Freemasons like Ben Franklin and George uh, Washington played essential roles in the American revolution and among the ranks uh, were uh, uh, Freemasons uh, were nine signers of the declaration of independence and 13 signers of the constitution. Uh, but Freemasonry, born in Britain, after all, had adherents on both sides of the conflict. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so uh, I guess let's get down to it. Did they, did Freemasons start the American Revolutionary War? Eric says yes. Wow. Yes. Let's go. So that would be the, an example of having had more power, more control than, Ooh. yeah, he says yes about that. Okay. Uh, Contrary to the law symbol, you don't have to drink wine from a skull to become a ranking Freemason, apparently. It hit its peak in the uh, in the U.S. in the late 1950s, apparently. And uh, a total of some, uh, uh, almost one in every 10 eligible adult males were members, a total of some 4 million and hardly a tiny elite. Uh, I don't know, whatever that means, I have no idea. So, um, so anyway, so I, I guess, Basically, the takeaway here is that they are this, this start out small in the 17th century, maybe, and they had a lot of power back then. They grew, and of course, some splintered off to be more occult stuff. But they are um, uh, they are descendants of the Knights of Templar. Is that mm -hmm. why they started the, at, in the first place? As you know, my grandpappy was a knight of the Templar. Yes, kind of thing. yes, yes, it is. Yes, it has changed. You know, uh, Eric says people have, you know, a lot of people he said got involved because it was more about the, I guess, like you could call it like a fellowship and, you know, just like being part of something. But a yeah. lot of people weren't really, you know, into what, you know, it, it actually was the idea of what was actually going on. So a lot of people have left, you know, don't, don't practice it, don't participate. Um, but it still very much exists. It's still, oh yeah, yeah, very much exists. And um, there's still sectors that practice more cult type stuff. There's sectors who he says are really rigid with the original, um, the original stuff. He's saying it's like um, in the Jewish faith, there's like the you know Orthodox, yeah, oh yeah, and then the the Reformed, and, and so he says it's it's similar to that. You know, there's some. Okay some die hard and then some more casual about just being part of something. All right. And so then, where is the treasure? No. I'm not going to go looking for it guys. I promise. Uh, so as many of you probably know, my geography is not great, but I'm out like um, Europe, Asia. I'm out there. Okay. Does anybody in the organization know where it is or has that secret been lost long ago? Eric says lost. It's been lost long ago. Okay. So they did hold it, but now mm -hmm. they're like, I don't know. Where'd you put it? I don't know. Where'd you put it? I thought you were handling it. Kind of yeah. Thing. And also like, it's not just in one place. Oh yes. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, why uh, will the, do they take w women into their membership or is it still men only? Eric says it's still men only. Have they ever thought about taking in women? And if so, why not? Uh, tradition tradition okay, Eric says it. yeah any juicy secrets about any anything else uh -huh. about the freemasons and no. maybe bring your great grandfather papa grant terrell in uh, he was a freemason so uh, eric just says there is a connection to the illuminati um Ooh, okay yeah. uh, here there, there's a connection there um and it's your uh, eric's great grandfather right 
Mm -hmm. Papa. He says, he says it was more casual for him. Oh, I bet. Yeah, it was. It was you, Papa, you were awesome. He was all into the alien stuff. Yeah. And oh, way back when it was not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. The Freemason stuff, he says he was more casual about. Okay. Although he wasn't like a diehard, you know. Okay. Papa, how you doing over there? Great. Anna. <laughs> Great. Good. Good. I miss sure. you. Do you watch over the kids and grandkids? Oh, absolutely. He said, um, it's, uh, he says, your family is very impressive. Um, and he says, he knows you're proud of them. Oh yeah. yeah. And I, I do. There are days I really miss you guys. You were, you, yeah. you're Nana. Sweet, were, sweet were, people. Sweet. When we needed sweet. Yeah, yes. Very abusive parents. So. Yes. No, they're because they said they were sweet and loving like what maybe you wish you had had for parents, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. So wait, one more question about the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. What are, 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 what are they exactly? Are they a force of good or evil or is it the same? Like, oh, that's that one. it's very, very similar. Yeah. Some not so good. Others good. Um, it's very similar, very similar. Perfect. What's their mission statement, so to speak? And then we'll end off on at that point. So what Eric is saying about them is their their secretiveness is is um so how he's putting it is like the Freemasons is really uh, there is a lot of segregated aspects of it where where even people in the Freemasons don't know everything that's kind of going on. He says the Illuminati is a bit different like that. Everybody who's involved in it kind of knows everything about what's going on. Oh. Um, a secret society um, clubs. He's telling me, Eric is saying that there are women that are part of the Illuminati. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was just strictly men too, but there's some sort of a connection between the two groups. Oh, oh really? Okay. So so what is it, what is the purpose or what did they think their purpose is, the Illuminati? Taking over the world. No, I don't know. Well. Guarding this the temp, Templar treasure. Yeah, gu guarding, protecting, um, protecting secrets. It does feel religious. There does feel to be a religious aspect here um, to okay. this, um, to, to the Illuminati. I don't really know anything about them. There feels like there's a religious aspect, but then there's also power, money, yeah. control. Um, there is Illuminati members throughout high places. Oh, um, yeah. Very similar. Very, very similar. Like a lot of politicians, probably. Yep. World leaders. Yep. Uh, do they get invited by some grand wizard or master or something? Or, or do they just fill out a form, download the application? No, no. no it's Illuminati.org. <laughs> Eric says invite only. Oh. Eric says invite only, whereas the fr Freemasons might be a little easier to get involved with how he's putting it. Yeah. The Illuminati is a little bit more suspicious, more rigid, more um, like that. So he says, Eric says invite only. Is there one top guy in control of the, or girl in control of the Illuminati? He says four. Four, okay. Four people. That are at the top of it. Yeah, this feels like um, like how he's putting it is like the Illuminati feels more like from the top down, like everybody's okay. Whereas the Freemasons are kind of like more yeah, easy. yeah, yep. All right. So, um, does the Illuminati do they have to do with the Bilderberg thing? Some meeting and Bilderberg. Uh, I don't know the Bilderberg complex. Yes. I don't know what that is. I have no idea, but Eric says yes. I can't remember what it is either. Our <laughs> last that I'm not, I'm still fuzzy on it. What is their main goal, their main purpose, their mission statement, the Illuminati? As far as the mission statement, all I can get from Eric is that there's a religious aspect, there's control and pa power and, and like this feeling of being important and kind of working with secrets, but I don't really know what their okay. Maybe we're not supposed to know what their plan is, what their mission statement is, what their goal. Is. I don't really. It feels it's good. Secret. I mean, of course, everything can have power, but is there? Do they really want to like protect humanity from aliens or protect humanity? Anything like that, or is no. there anything good about it? 
well, yeah, it doesn't feel completely nefarious, although there is some nefarious stuff with it. It's it's not. It, it's more about here and now, like the Earth and what's going on on the planet and how to kind of uh, run things smoothly. And, and so it does feel good. But, you know, what a group of people think is the best way to run things affects, you know, a bunch of other people. So it doesn't feel like super spiritual, although there is a religious aspect to it is what yeah. he's telling me. It yeah. feels more about um, structure of how things run right now. Okay. And, and staying on top of staying on top of things getting out of hand, but for their benefit, it, it does feel um, like for their benefit, not necessarily the greater oh. good. Oh, interesting. That just feels mm. so right. I think you're spot on. All right. I think we'll wrap it up. Anything else you want to say about the Freemason or Illuminati, um, Derek? Or no, Paul? no. He's, he's laughing and teasing me just about like, oh, I hope you don't get on anybody's radar. <laughs> <laughs> oh no hey i know he's, he's teasing me they're harmless forget about it he's yep. did anyway yes right. i know he's playing with me okay um love you. he says love you love you love you <laughs>